Hey guys, welcome back to another block spotlight. Uh, this time we're going to talk about high pressure steam boilers. Uh, we will cover low pressure steam boilers a little bit, uh, but not too much. Uh, for the solid fueled firebox, uh, you need seven bricks, one fire charge, and one furnace, uh, just in case you don't know how to make a fire charge. Uh, it's one blaze powder, one gunpowder, one coal or you can use charcoal uh, and that will get you three fire charges. For a liquid fueled firebox which is more expensive than the solid fueled it is four steel plates which is made with four steel ingots that gives you uh, in a rolling machine that gives you four steel plates uh, uh, one fire charge, one bucket, two iron bars and a furnace Yes. Uh, like I say, the liquid fuel firebox is much more expensive than the solid fuel. Uh, for the high pressure steam boiler, which is you know what you need on top, uh, it is two steel plates. Yeah. Uh, for the low pressure steam boiler, it is two iron plates, which is made the same way as the steel plates, except with iron instead of steel. Uh, gives you four iron plates. For the steam turbine housing, uh, which will generate EU, uh, you need four blocks of steel and four steel plates, and that will give you three turbine housings. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's well worth it. Uh, the turbine housings require what is called a turbine rotor uh, to function and generate EU. Uh, each turbine rotor is three turbine discs. Uh, each turbine disc is eight turbine blades and a block of steel. Uh, each turbine blade is three steel ingots. So yeah, this is quite expensive. Uh, it takes a while of cooking iron in a blast furnace, getting steel. Uh, these are the varying sizes. Uh, this is the biggest of the high pressure steam boilers. Uh, this is the one I would recommend working toward. Uh, I guess you know you could make them bigger as you go, but I, for me, I generally just try to go for this one and be done with it. Uh, but yeah, there's several different sizes. Uh, you can see there's, you know, the one, one by two, I guess, one by one by two. Yeah, it's one block wide, one block deep, two blocks tall. Uh, it's not really very good at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not really worth making. Uh, then you have two by two by three, two by two by four, three by three by three, 3x3x4, three 3x3x5. By three by three by three by five. Yeah, 5 tall, 3 wide, 3 deep. Uh, the same goes for the liquid fueled firebox. Uh, you set them up with you know the firebox on the bottom and the steam boilers on top. Yeah. Uh, the solid fueled can run on anything that burns, really. Uh, any solid object that burns, sticks, wood, whatever. Um, I have one set up over here. This is a solid fueled firebox, and I'm running it on coal coke. Uh, it seems, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that is like the best thing to run it on, unless you have like a tier 5 blaze spawner, and then you can just run this thing off of blaze rods, just have it automatically feed into it, uh, like I do with the coal coke here. Uh, these are the steam turbine or the rotor housings, steam tur yeah, steam turbines uh, that hold the turbine rotors. Uh, as you can see, they're outputting zero percent right now. Uh, that's because they don't have anywhere to send their power. But if we hook an MFSU, you will see that this starts gathering power. These start putting out power. Uh, you want the output at a hundred percent. 
and you got to connect it in several different places to get that 100%. Uh, if you just connect it in one place, here, let's do this. You will see the output dropping dramatically. Yeah. So connect it in a, in a few different spots to get this thing going at 100%. And, you know, it's not the greatest EU production, but if you've just got, you know, a few machines running, it is more than adequate. Uh, you can also run steam engines off the steam boiler. Uh, these are industrial steam engines. They output 8MJ uh, at full steam. As you can see, they're all full steam. Yeah. So you can, it's a great way if you're just trying to produce EU and MJ at the same time in the same place. This is probably one of, you know, a good way to do it. Uh, this is just a quick comparison between the low pressure steam boiler and the high pressure steam boiler. Uh, as you can see, the high pressure steam boiler can hold 1.152 million steam. I believe that's micro buckets of steam. Uh, the low pressure is 576,000 which is like half. I think it's like exactly half. <laughs> um, so yeah with the low pressure uh, you, you're more limited on what you can run off of it because uh, it will go through the steam faster. Uh, with the high pressure of course you know more steam more stuff you can run. So yeah uh, to get water into them, you could just use an aqueous accumulator, or you can use a pump in, you know, in an ocean or something like that. Uh, any way to get water into it, it has to be pumped. Uh, whatever you pump into it has to be pumped into the bottom, the the bottom row here, into the actual fireboxes. Yeah, and and again, you know, I just got it running off a of cold coke. Uh, these are the liquid fueled, uh, low pressure here, high pressure here. Uh, they hold the same amount of steam as their solid fueled counterparts. Uh, this one's running, you know, they're both running off of biofuel. This is what I would recommend. You run your uh, liquid fueled steam boilers off of. Uh, again, just, you know, aqueous accumulators pumping into the bottom. Uh, like I have over here, you could set the aqueous accumulator right next to it. Make sure the output is facing into this, well, you know, into that, and then you just two water sources right next to it, and that will keep it full of water. Uh, the liquid fueled firebox, uh, if we take a look here. Oh, sorry about that. Here, uh, the biofuel, per bucket of biofuel, it is 32,000 heat in a liquid-fueled firebox. So it creates 32,000 heat per bucket. Yeah, per thousand. So that's 16 buckets it holds here. And, yeah. Uh, like I say, that's what I would recommend running it off of, because it's, you know, it's pretty pretty early game stuff. You can start making uh, biofuel pretty soon. You know, pretty early game. Uh, the same with coal coke. You can, you know, start making it early game. It's not difficult to make. Uh, running it off of like, uh, like I have one over there running off of blaze rods. Uh, it was for something else I was doing. Uh, the one in my LP runs off of blaze rods and it runs perfectly fine. Uh, it takes a lot. A lot. Uh, it burns through blaze rods. Let's see, these produce 6.4k heat. And if we look up blaze rods, we will see that they produce 0.8k heat. So the coal coke is definitely better. Uh, burns longer than the blaze rods, but if you have a tier 5 blaze spawner, their blaze rods are free. So you just build up a surplus and then hook it up to your steam boiler 
and away you go. Uh, it, you need to get to 100 degrees before it starts producing heat. Uh, that's the same for the, li uh, the liquid steam boiler. Uh, once you hit 100, it will slowly rise to about middle. Uh, and then it'll hover there for, you know, a little bit. And then once you get up towards, like, you know, like where this one is, like 130 or so, uh, it'll fill with steam. Uh, unless you have something running off of it, uh, it'll hover around middle longer because you're using the steam as it's producing it. Uh, they run they run most effectively, most efficiently at max heat. So you want to make sure you keep fuel pumping into this thing so it's constantly got something to burn. Uh, if you do not, you will lose heat and you will have to, you know, use even more fuel. So you want a constant supply of fuel for these guys. Uh, for this, this is just deep storage unit full of coal coke. I got a diamond end gate here, a diamond end gate here. You don't need diamond end gates. Uh, this one just says if it receives pipe signal to pulse. This one just says if fuel's low to turn on red, uh, red pipe signal. So that sends a signal to this when fuel inside this is low. So it just keeps, it keeps enough fuel in here for it to run. As you can see, it usually keeps a full stack here and then like 12 here. Yeah. So these guys, they produce, I believe it's 215 EU per tick. So with two of them, it's 400 and, or 225 EU. Yeah, so 450 EU coming into this guy. So like I say, it's not the greatest source of EU, but it definitely works. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it for today. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, and yeah, I will see you all next time.